Hello, my name is Prilika, aka Jacket Gaming, and today I want to teach you how to use masking, layering, gradients, grouping, and glow in order to bring the most out of your decals, as well as some paste settings that can help you put them on your AC. To start off, let's say we want to make this decal, but with a lot less detail, and maybe a bit slimmer too. So first, we'll try and get that generic background shape. We'll do that with um, this shape. We'll keep it white. Rotate it a bit. Try and get a good general shape going. I'm going to press Q to copy it for ease of use. I'm going to make this one shorter, and I'm also going to change the color to red just so we can see it easier. And we'll want it about up here. We'll want the bottom angle to ma or, um, bottom slant to match so that it doesn't look weird. And there we go. Now we have our generic shape. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn the shape into a mask. And we, um, we hover over this part in the sidebar press F and we click toggle mask and what this does is it turns this object into a mask object which only shows the overlap between any decals below it so if I were to move this one around you can see how it um sort of makes the outline of the the bigger shape below it and something else we can do is we can actually toggle the mask again to invert it and so now it doesn't show any detail on the overlap this is what we're going to want to do with this shape because we want this um we want this sort of the L shape, right? So I'm going to just uh, about here looks good. And I'm going to change the color of the bottom one to black because that's what the other ones use and it looks really good. So now what we're going to want to do is add the detail. We'll do that by um, just use a regular square. I'm going to color it red just so it's easy to identify. Um, we're going to make it, oh, not the angle. We're going to make it a lot thinner and shorter, and we're going to try and have it about in the middle here. And then I'm going to press Q to copy it. For ease of use, we're going to make it shorter because it's going to be a lot shorter on the bottom part here. And we'll just try and match the angle with the background shape. And that looks about good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to combine these two shapes into one shape and we do that by pressing E on both of them and you can see when I press E it makes a sound and it brings this checkbox and these empty boxes and you just press E or click um, whichever shapes you want to add and then when you're done you have them all added you press enter and click create group and this sort of combines all the objects all the shapes into one. And from here, we can actually toggle it as a mask. And this is what we're going to want to do before we add the gradients. So to add the gradients, we're going to make just another square. Um, we can say that we're going for a red color this time. So we'll make the color of this red, and we'll move it down so that we can see it um, below the mask. You can also see an outline even when most of it's not visible. So what we're going to do is we're going to just sort of box in our detail here that we're going to want the gradient to apply to. Once we have that, we can first we'll copy it and then we'll apply the gradient on top of this one. First, let's change the color to make it more obvious. I'm going to change it to a much lighter red. And then what we're going to do is we're going to press F, edit gradient, and we're going to select one of these. Now my favorite for these sorts of details is this one, the one that starts horizontally in the middle and then fades up and down. And you can see now that we have that, um, we have that sort of bright spot in the center and the dark spots on the edges. But now we've run into a problem because we have our detail here and we have the gradients that are masked behind it. Those look good, but we don't see the background that we made earlier. And the reason why that is, is because it's also being applied to the masks that we just made. And the way that we fix that is we actually group the mask and the gradients together. So we select all these three by pressing E on each of them, hit enter, create group. Now you can see our entire detail piece is just in this one group. 
and our background is visible, visible again. So you can adjust this however you like. I'm going to make the background a bit wider because it looked a bit off. And now our decal is ready. However, what if we don't like it? What if you want to go back and change something? Well, it's actually really easy. You just select the group that you made and you can ungroup it and it will separate everything back again. Even um, even the groups inside of it, you can ungroup those and you can see how they're still colored red just like at the beginning of the tutorial. So now let's say we want the detail to be green. Now we just edit this back piece here. Uh, we can make it just a very bright green, confirm, and we'll go to our gradient. We'll make this a very bright color. And then we will group our detail pieces again, turn them into a mask, group the gradients and masks together, and then we have our decal ready. So now that we've made our decal and we've gone over masking, layering, gradients, and grouping, now we can talk about glow. So for glow, usually I like to just make a decal, and I'll do that by um, starting with the circle making it whatever color I want and then I just apply a gradient and the gradient you'll want is one of these three right here and I like the less intense one because it looks a lot better on the AC in my opinion and that's how you make a glow something else you can do though is use I and K on your keyboard when the decal is selected in order to adjust the opacity because if it's too intense it might look bad so you can experiment with different opacity values and that's everything to do with glow. Now that we've made our main decal and the glow decal, I'd like to go over my favorite strategy for applying decals consistently and symmetrically. And we'll start by going on the core. Uh, we'll find a good place for our decal. I like the corners here, kind of um, at the base of the pointy part. So we're going to find our decal. And what I like to do is I like to find a point of reference. So I like to point the um, of the red dot right on the corner here, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So they both have approximately the same pace location, but mirrored. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to just try and fit this one how I want it. So we want it to line up this way. And that one looks pretty good. And now we can use the measurements for this one for the size and angle in order to make the other one look good too and match it. So um, we have a length of 55 and a height of 48. And so we just move that for this one, 48 and 55. And we can also see the angle here. We have 165, so we can go negative 165 That'll give us the angle. And now all we have to do is align it um, with, based on the XY position. And for the XY position, in the advanced pay settings there on the right, don't worry about having that set up for both sides because decals are not always centered when you make them. So it's not a reliable way to adjust your decals. Uh, I will try and get the corner there lined up right by the circle, and that looks about good. So now we have a reasonably mirrored and symmetrical decal. Now that we have our main decals in place, we can start putting some glow on them. Now you can put glow directly onto the decal when you're making the decal image in the image editor. However, I prefer to put the um, glow decals over the main decals on the AC itself because it gives you a lot more freedom for making it look exactly how you want it. So for this one, I'm going to put it about halfway down the green part. I'm going to set the width. Now this is this part is difficult for glow, but you want to align the angle right. And I know it's hard to see, but you just have to get it the best you can. And there we go. 
And I'll do the same thing for the other side. I'll put it halfway down. I'll just make it as thin as possible. 0 0.1 is the minimum. And then I set the angle to be how I want. One strategy for getting the glow angle where you want is to just hold down one of the angle buttons and you can see it sort of spinning around. And so you can get it stopped right where you want it. And it'll give you a better estimate of what the angle actually is. Um, you could leave it there with a very low effort glow. It still looks really good. But if you want, you can add more glow, um, especially back here. I'll set the angle for that. And I will do the same on the other side. There we go. And now we have our decals all ready to go. All right, so the last few things I want to go over involve the paste settings. So to start this off, I will post this decal because it's a very big decal, and I'll put it right here. And I'll press tab to open up the paste settings menu, which also has the facing adjustments. So target location, there are three modes. There's all, main, and sub. Sub parts are like smaller, more detail oriented parts. They're, um, it's basically two separated sections that you can paste decals onto. And some frame parts have really cool spots you can mess around with. So I definitely recommend looking out for those and experimenting. Um, as for the maximum dis distance, I'm going to move the decal up here a little bit. I'm just gonna post this here, I'm going to make this really long. So you see how it goes all the way down to the bottom of the arm there, kind of by the wrists. What the maximum distance does is increasing it makes it so the decal can go lower. In this case there's no place for it to go lower so you don't see a change. But if you make it negative, it makes it so the decal doesn't have as much depth. If you go too far then it won't be pasted on anything. So usually I'd like to get it just low enough where it's not where it's protruding out somewhere where you don't want it to be. Now for the facing adjustments, specifically the x-axis adjustment, I have the mind alpha core here, which is a really good example of this because the x-axis adjustment allows you to bend the paste angle of the decal vertically. And so I have this decal here that I like to put on the chest of mind alpha core because it looks really cool and I'm going to shrink it and make it long enough where it goes across the whole thing. And now, it doesn't quite fit to the curve there, right? It's very far off, but we can fix that with the x-axis adjustment angle. So we can curve it more to the shape of the core. Now, based on the line there, um, of the core, you can see we kind of went too far, so we can go back down a little bit. Ah, and that looks a lot better. And there we go, now we have a decal that matches the curve a lot better, and it looks pretty cool. Something else you can do is, um, you can copy and paste this. And even if you flip it upside down, it still has that same angle to it. Like it's not um, it's not something that depends on the, the angle of the decal. So you can very easily just flip it and make something like this, which is what I have on my main AC. One last example of facing adjustment that I would like to bring up. Um, this time it's going to be on the barrel head and we're going to be focusing on the Y axis adjustments. So I have this decal here. Um, I like it because it looks um, a, a little brainy. So I'm going to make it a bit wider here. I'm going to set it to sub only. So that way we don't uh, move over some of the main paint job there. I'm going to move it over to the side. And now what I want to do, even though it looks good already, is I want to curve it. So I'll focus on the y-axis adjustment. I'll go a little bit negative, maybe just 10. That way it sort of gets that um, look that it's just, just slightly curving in. Just slightly. 
and it gives it a very brainy look that I really like. So that's just one example. There's many places where you'd use these settings and I encourage you to find them on your own. But yeah, that should do it for the tutorial. Um, hope you guys found it informative. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm in Strikers Discord and Ramen Server. Very active there, but you can find me in other places too. Um, alrighty. Happy Ducked Gaming.